Okay, so we'll discuss today the Article 2, Section 6 of the Constitution, which is the uh, separation of church and state. Okay. What does the provision states? Okay, separation of church and state shall be inviolable. Okay, and part of that separation is the tax exemption, which is provided for under the Constitution. Okay, particularly okay, if you read Article 6, okay, uh, Section 28, Paragraph 3 of the Constitution, still. There are exemptions okay, given to charitable institutions, churches, parsonages, okay, and all its properties which are actually, directly, and exclusively used okay, for that purpose. So, if the keyword here is actually, directly, and exclusively used, the property use. Okay, by this charitable institution, churches, religious, um, mosques, uh, cemeteries shall be exempt from tax. And the tax it refers to our property taxes. Okay? So take note of that okay, because the confusion lies on as to whether they are tax exempt. Okay, take note, we are talking here of business and these are money matters. In many cases filed in court questioning its uh, ta it being taxable. Okay? So, you, you name what are those churches, okay? mosques, it refers to religious institutions. They are exempt, but as to exemption, it refers only to property taxes. Okay? Take note, it must only be um, actually directly and exclusively used okay, for that purpose. Now, if the religious okay, charitable institution, churches, okay, has a property but it did not use it for, um, it's not exclusive, it's not actually used, then it is taxable as to its property taxes. Now, the other confusion lies on Article 16, uh, 14, paragraph section 4, uh, paragraph 3, which states that the non stop non profit educational institution is also tax exempt, but what kind of tax that they are exempt only refers to the income tax, okay, property tax, donor's tax, and customs duties. Okay, so are we clear on this? Let me explain further. Okay. So, what if um, non stock non profit edu educational institution has its income okay, which are not directly related okay, to educational purposes? Is it exempt as to its income? Okay? It is not. Okay? Take note um, the exemption only refers to if it's directly, exclusively, and um, actually, okay. So the keyword there is actually, directly, and exclusively used. An example of which is that let's say educational institution, but part of it, um, of its building uses it for another purpose. So the tax there, the exemption is only up to its educational institution. But as to other income, let us say below the building uses. The first floor, for example, for a pharmacy and other commercial uh, um, commercial purposes, then that is not tax exempt because it, it has another income. It is not exclusive. Okay, it is not exclusive. There are many cases, okay, um, on, on on this matter. Okay, the exemption of a non-stock, non-profit educational institution. Okay, because educational institution, if it's non tax non-profit, um, there is a, a great discount. Okay, because uh, basically, they do not pay any income. Okay, so in fact, some of the universities here would claim that they are non stock non-profit educational institution to, to, to have to avail of the exemptions. Okay, so there is a, also another institution 
who claims to be tax exempt because okay, it is um, charitable institution. Okay, so take note again if it's non stock non uh, charitable institution as to its real properties only. Okay, but if there are other income, okay, aside from the real properties, then that is not tax exempt. Now, what are these um, income? Okay. So the income here must refer only to the income of that business okay, or income of that institution in which it is created. Okay. For example, if it's non-stock, non-profit educational institution, the income of that must be tax exempt. Okay. Only on, on the business that is related to educational institution. But other income, which is not related, okay, it is taxable. Okay? Now, how about those canteens? Canteens operated by educational institutions. Okay? Is, it, is it part of the purpose of which it was created? Okay? Uh, how about those uh, books, for example, sold in a, by, by the school? Is it part of the educational institution? Part of its business? Okay? So generally it's part, right? But as to other income which is not related, okay, like as I've mentioned, um, part of its building was leased to a pawn shop, for example, or a pharmacy which is, direct, which is not related to business, to the business of the institution, then it is not tax exempt. Okay? So, Property tax, okay? So take note here. Because mo most of these non-stock, non-profit institutions, some are actually owned by religious institutions, right? So they can also avail of the property tax because under this article here, Article 6, okay, Paragraph 3, okay, of Section 28, religious, okay, charitable institutions, churches, okay? So as to its property, if it is actually directly and exclusively used, then it is tax okay, exempt as to its property tax. And what are these property tax? It refers to real properties. Okay. What are those real properties? These are buildings. Okay, lands and buildings. Okay. So churches land is tax exempt. Okay. Or let us say a seminary, okay? It is tax exempt as to its building and the land. What if the land was used for another purposes, like agriculture, and it earns income? Is it part? Is it is it tax exempt? No. Okay, no more. It's not tax exempt. Okay. Um, so basically, if it is charitable institution, um, churches, parsonages. Okay, anything that is owned by a religious group, as long as they can prove that it is a religious group, okay, it is tax exempt as to its real property taxes, including real properties, which is actually directly and exclusively used for that purpose, being a, uh, it could be charitable or religious purposes. Okay. Now, this is crucial because some of the, there are institutions which claims to be tax exempt, okay, it may not be religious, but the organization was registered either as a non-stop, non-profit educational institution, okay. So the bottom line there is that if that non-stop, non-profit educational institution is um, functioning, Okay. or its business is to, to educate, then its income is tax exempt. Okay. Now, there are, how will you know? How will you know that the institution is indeed non-stock, non-profit? Non-stock, non-profit. You will know it by its bylaws. Okay. So, uh, an institution or an organization, when they register in the Securities and Exchange Commission, it states there, this is an institution which is non-stock, non-profit. Okay? 
you will know it because one one of the requirement for a an organization or a corporation to be registered it will indicate there its main purpose or primary purpose okay and the secondary purpose the primary purpose it would state what it is purpose so if you are a a foundation okay that is dedicated to 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 educate okay you will indicate the non stock non profit meaning that the end of the year you will not have any profit at all okay unlike corporations where at the end of the year they will have dividend like Jollibee for example at the end of the year those stockholders will receive a dividend but if it's non stock non profit they do not have any income because the income will go back to the business for its operation okay so are there other institutions which are like that there are many okay. and these are created or founded by a philanthropic person okay those who believe on development they do not know what to do with their money they put up a foundation create a non stock non profit organizations so to reward them of being generous then they are given an exemptions okay so if it's non stock non profit educational institution they are tax exempt as to its okay, income okay the property the donors if there are donations donors tax okay custom duties custom duties refers to the importation of the goods okay coming from other country if it is um, delivered to that institution then it is tax uh, exempt on customs duties okay